This is ABC. Baby boomers, people roughly between the ages of 40 and 50, probably remember well their teen years, their long-term memories, the first kiss, prom night, the lyrics to all their favorite songs. But many are having trouble remembering the simple things of daily life because of normal changes in their short-term memory. Do you know where my purse is? Uh, no. Baby boomer Helene Siporin, at 48, lives in New York City with her husband and daughter. And she says she's been forgetting more often in the last few years. What did I do with the envelopes? Here they are. Found them. Baby boomers like Helene are now learning that their long-term memories, that is, memories from the distant past, are easy to recall. These memories are so firmly planted in the brain's storage centers that they're not likely to fade. But short-term memories, that is, memories from the recent past, things like a telephone number or the name of somebody you met a few days ago, can easily slip your mind as you get older. Now, that can sound kind of depressing, but this story is about how to keep your short-term memory in the best possible working order, as well as why we forget more as we age. Dr. Moni de Leon, a neuroscientist at New York University Medical Center, says it should come as no surprise that middle-aged baby boomers do forget more than they did in the flush of their youth. Normal aging itself, uh, as it ages the skin and ages other organs, uh, will also age the brain. We just tend not to see it. Do you sense any anxiety among baby boomers about this? A great deal. Uh, I'm often asked, you know, does this mean I have Alzheimer's disease if I can't remember the name of, uh, uh, of this and that? To see for ourselves, okay. I volunteered to have my short-term memory tested, representing the elders of America at age 76 as did two of my ABC News colleagues, producer Peter Bull, at 44, representing the baby boomers, and associate producer Joel Engardio, representing Generation X, at age 25. Dr. Susan DeSanti at New York University gave us the test. One part of it involved word pairs. Here's part of the test, and you might want to play along. Now I'm going to read you pairs of words. I'd like you to remember the words that pair together because when I'm done, I'm going to read one of the words in the pair, and I'll ask you to tell me the other. Cup, smile. Tree, cold. House, book. Dr. DeSanti then moved on to other sections of the test, in part to distract us. Distraction and delay are critical in testing short-term memory, because it's not instant recall which is affected by age, but delayed recall. So we'll delay a few minutes before giving the answers. Dr. DeSanti predicts, based on our ages, that there will be a difference in our recall rate. That's because, as shocking as this may seem, the entire brain actually begins to shrink a little as early as your 40s. By 50 years of age, it's very apparent to see the aging effect in the brain. To help Dr. De Leon illustrate this point, I agreed to undergo an MRI, a magnetic resonance imaging test, to have an actual picture taken of my brain. Peter Bull and Joel and Gardio agreed to do the same. How are you doing, Joel? Good. OK, very good. I'm going to set up for the next one now. Dr. De Leon told us that if our brains are typical, the MRI scans will show differences in brain sizes. What interests him and his team most on their journey inside our brains is the hippocampus. There's one on the right and one on the left. Crucial in short-term memory, the hippocampi function like distribution centers, sending new information to the correct part of the brain to be stored. And what did they see when they checked out our hippocampi? We found three very healthy individuals. We found three brains that were showing their age, but that's a normal thing to show. Uh, oh, this is all of us, huh? Yeah. Yes. And so here you see in red, the hippocampi have been drawn in. And you can see how Joel, at 25, yeah. has these rather plump, red areas uh, right. showing this very full, robust hippocampus, whereas Peter, at 44, is showing a very normal-looking hippocampus, but it's just a little bit smaller. And you, at 76, shows a very little change relative to Peter. 
I'll uh, settle for that. Yeah, it's great. Well, I am happy about that. Nonetheless, my hippocampi are smaller than Joel's and Peter's, and that's a normal part of aging, say the experts. Well, it certainly seems like time to see how our different sized brains have done on the memory test. See how much you can remember. What went with cup? Smile. Yes. What did I say with tree? Uh, when, uh, the cold. Yes. What went with house? Book. Yes. The results, Generation X won with a score of 10. Peter and I both earned scores of nine. When and I on finish, another part of the test, we were asked to recall entire paragraphs remember. of information. Okay, New York, September 28. The Century Theater on Columbus Street Actors and actresses. Again, Joel remembered the most, earning a score of 13.5. Peter's score was 11.5, and mine was 10.5. Results which fit in with our age differences. Not necessarily the kind of news people over 40 like to hear. But before you resort to any extreme measures, it's important to get some perspective here. Just because you're aging doesn't mean you can't function perfectly well. Most short-term memory lapses are simply annoying, so there's no need to start shopping for a new brain. And there are things you can do to keep your brain and memory in the best shape possible. Recent research has shown that stress can also affect memory. Excess stress, stress that is severe and chronic, can produce damage to the brain, and especially the memory centers. The hippocampus is particularly vulnerable to the effects of stress. Here is a situation of extreme stress. A subordinate tree shrew trapped in a cage with a dominant tree shrew for weeks. Researchers found that because of exposure to the stress hormones, the hippocampi of the subordinate tree shrew had actually shrunk. There's debate about how quickly damage like this becomes permanent. Take it easy. But experts do agree that you should try to keep your stress at a moderate level. Exercise, take regular vacations, relax. But you're a baby boomer and you want to do more to be proactive, a trademark of your generation. So what about the supplements? The Ginkgo products are most visible. Makers of these products claim ginkgo can improve memory in healthy people. If you knew that Ginkai ginkgo tablets were proven by clinical testing... And the sales are astounding. Over $70 million worth last year. Listening to the ads, it might sound like there's general agreement in the scientific world that ginkgo works. But not so fast, says Dr. Ferris. In his view, the studies which have been done on ginkgo so far are flawed. I wouldn't rule out the possibility that uh, in, in uh, properly done trials uh, that compound like ginkgo might turn out to be uh, helpful. Uh, I remain skeptical until, uh, until such studies are actually conducted. But he's not skeptical about vitamin E. Dr. Ferris says he and many of his neuroscientist colleagues take it because there's strong evidence that it helps protect brain cells from the effects of aging. Studies have shown vitamin E to be a powerful antioxidant, meaning it can help remove damaging materials from cells. Helene says she's convinced that her occasional memory lapses have nothing to do with illness. She is just going through what 76 million other baby boomers are going through, aging. Let's talk for a moment about the positive things about aging. <laughs> there are some. I've always like to think that an accumulated wisdom can somehow make a brain better, it seems to me, at a more advanced age than it was when it was young and unfocused. Is, is that a legitimate view? I think it's a very legitimate view. As a matter of fact, that proved true when Dr. DeSanti tested our vocabularies. The Generation X man scored 69. Audacious. Audacious, can I pass? Audacious is... Uh, Courageous in an arrogant way, I would suppose. And I, the elder, scored 76. The baby boomer, he came in at 77. The older you are, the greater the store of knowledge you have to draw on. And even though you might be a bit more forgetful as you age, that doesn't mean you can't add knowledge to your brain.
There are many parts of the brain that maintain their neuroplasticity, which means that we can continue, even in old age, uh, to learn new things and to, to grow new interconnections, uh, uh, richer synapses uh, between our brain cells. Marvelous. So the adage, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, is a fallacy, isn't it? That's right. Which means you can also teach baby boomers new tricks, as Helene learned in the memory course. It made me feel that I didn't have to simply drift uh, downwards into further decay. It made me feel that I could um, grab hold of things and improve my situation. Well, this old dog is sure a shot. <laughs>